Hi, everybody. My name is Dr. Carrie Krieger. I am the founder and executive director of Save the Frogs. Save the Frogs is the world's leading amphibian conservation. We do work in California, across the USA, and around the world to protect amphibian populations and to promote a society that respects and appreciates nature and wildlife. Welcome to Save the Frogs Academy, where we teach you how to save the planet. And one of the best ways to save the planet is to volunteer and get real world experience doing actual amphibian conservation applied projects that benefit amphibians. So today we are going to be talking about volunteering for Save the Frogs. And let's go ahead. We're on the homepage right now of SaveTheFrogs.com. If you scroll down in the left sidebar, you'll see volunteer and you can click that to get to our volunteers page, which is SaveTheFrogs.com slash volunteers. So let's see. I guess I'll start out what we're going to do is run down this volunteers page, which lists a lot of the main thoughts I have about volunteering and gives you a lot of ways that you can help out and a lot of ideas of activities you can do that um, I have so many activities listed here that some of them you should definitely find enjoyable and um, of interest to you. So first off, for anyone on the line who has already volunteered for Save the Frogs or helped out, thank you so much. Save the Frogs is very dependent on volunteers because we have a small staff of about five total people running all of our worldwide campaigns. So we get work done all around the world because we have a lot of people uh, donating their time to help us save the frogs and do something beneficial for the planet. So thanks a lot to all the volunteers out there. So let's first talk about why a person should volunteer. And I'll tell you about my volunteering experience as well. So as I said, we're very dependent on volunteers because we have a small staff. And we're trying to do something. We're trying to change society. We're trying to change the planet and put the earth on a good path towards uh, people living in harmony with nature and wildlife, whereas for the past um, many years, we'll say humans have been slowly or quickly degrading the planet, destroying forests, wetlands, polluting water, etc. So we've got a huge amount of work to be done. So we really need volunteers, people all over the world helping out in their community or helping out uh, Save the Frog, some of our stuff that we run here in our headquarters in California. So yeah, volunteering is good for the frogs, it's good for society, and also you will acquire valuable professional experience, gain new insights, and likely even feel happier. There's plenty of research that shows people who volunteer are happier because you feel good from having done something good. So there's lots of reasons to volunteer. And I'm going to read you a quote from one of my favorite authors, Napoleon Hill. The most profitable time a man devotes to labor is that for which he receives no direct or immediate financial compensation. For it must be remembered that there are two forms of compensation available. One is the wages he receives in money. The other is the skill he attains from his experiences a form of compensation that often exceeds monetary remuneration and for skill and experience are the workers most important stock and trade through which he may promote himself to higher pay and greater responsibilities. So basically you learn a lot from volunteering and uh, good things come from it that you may not notice. And certainly you may not currently notice uh, certainly in the field of environmental conservation, being that there are 
not as many jobs available as there are people who want them, the people who are eventually going to get those jobs are the people who have shown their dedication and picked up real world experience along the way that makes people want to hire them. Or maybe they'll make connections while volunteering for someone who will eventually hire them. And it's pretty much, from my experience, everybody who works in the field of the environment, just about everybody has volunteered because it's pretty much the way it is that you have to volunteer before you will eventually get a job. So if you're, some people may want to volunteer and they may not have an interest in an environmental career and that's fantastic. But if you do uh, have an interest in pursuing a career in the environment, then you definitely should volunteer and pick up some experience because you will have much higher chance of getting a job. So that brings me to uh, how I got started in the environment. I studied mechanical engineering at University of Virginia and finished my bachelor's of science degree there. I didn't have any biology experience. I didn't have any volunteering experience when I finished college. <clears throat> but right about that time, I knew I wanted to, or I thought I wanted to switch careers to environmental science. So I sent a letter to every professor at the University of Hawaii and the University of Alaska saying, I'd like to come to Hawaii or Alaska and help out with your biological research that you and your PhD students are doing. And only one professor wrote me back. It was in the days before email. I had actually sent out hard copy letters. He wrote me back, said, yes, come to Hawaii. So that's all I needed because it was an amazing experience where I spent three months uh, living about 6,000 feet up on Mauna Kea in Hawaii, helping PhD students do research on endangered birds. So that was a great experience. And then eventually I decided I wanted to work with frogs when I myself uh, was about to go do a PhD in environmental science. So since I had no experience with frogs, I did the same basic thing and I contacted professors in Mexico saying, hi, I want to come to Mexico and help out with frog conservation. So that's what I did. And I went down and um, went out into the desert in Zapotitlan de Salinas. Fast forward, I did my PhD or I went to Australia to do my own PhD work. So I was no longer a volunteer. Now suddenly I needed volunteers all the time because I was going out into the rainforest at night on streams where it's pretty dangerous. So I needed someone there just for safety purposes other than so that I would not be going out into dangerous rainforest streams at night by myself and also to help me with uh, data collection and catching frogs, things like that. So I uh, met a lot of people who like to volunteer and then I started Save the Frogs. And I, again, became a volunteer because when Save the Frogs started, we did not have any monetary source from which to start. So I worked for 18 months as a volunteer for Save the Frogs before I could take a salary because there was no money to pay me before that. And that was fine because I knew that it was one of the most important things I could do with my life was to get Save the Frogs going and making it into a worldwide organization and bringing frog awareness to the public. So I volunteered for 18 months. And then during that time, I learned a lot about organizing volunteers because instead of just having one single volunteer with me on a given night, like I had during my PhD, all of a sudden I had projects that require hundreds or thousands of people. So I started looking for a lot of volunteers and asking people to do things and coming up with lots of ideas on ways that people can get involved. <clears throat> and to date, Save the Frogs has had thousands of volunteers helping out with all kinds of different activities around the world. So I hope that you can get involved and uh, help us keep this uh, Save the Frogs movement going and growing. And 
So we're on the savethefrogs.com slash volunteers webpage. And if you keep scrolling down, you'll see this excellent video that Save the Frogs Advisory Committee Chairman Michael Starkey made about tabling and effective advocacy, communicating our mission. So all volunteers should watch this video. And it's specifically for people who are going to go out into the public and set up an informational table. But in reality, it's perfect for anybody who's volunteering because it gives you lots of ideas on how to effectively communicate our mission. So as I said, <clears throat> there's lots of ways that anybody can help save the frogs, perhaps without even ever contacting me. It would be great if we know you're helping out, but you don't need an official volunteer position with Save the Frogs in order to assist with our campaigns. And it's actually best that you take it upon yourself to do some of these activities listed here before applying to be an official volunteer, because you'll pick up skills and ideas and be able to do plenty without needing any um, input from us, which saves us time, because it does take time to train a volunteer. So all this stuff you can do on yourself. So educate yourself on savethefrogs.com. I'm sure all of you have been to the website. Uh, there's always more to learn on the website. There's actually so many pages on the website because I've been adding pages for five and a half years to the site, and I'm on the website adding to it pretty much every day that I'm working. So there's so much on there that even I see stuff I don't even remember that I wrote really. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's pretty interesting. So, you know, there's hundreds of pages there. So spend some time on it. It'll really help you be able to tell people about frogs and figure out what precisely you want to do for the frogs. Sign up for our newsletter if you don't get it. Top left of our pages, all of them have this subscribe to the free Save Frogs newsletter button. Go click that, get our newsletter and keep up to date with everything we have going on. Attend Save the Frogs Academy classes. So you're here and I'm glad you are. Savethefrogs.com slash academy for any of you YouTube viewers out there. We give free online classes every week about a variety of different amphibian conservation topics. And the entire point of Save the Frogs Academy is to train you and to get you helping out which equals volunteering. So um, it's great that all of you are on this call right now, and I hope that you will continue to join us for Save the Frogs Academy classes. Post flyers on our Spread the Word page. We have a lot of flyers that you can print out. The Spread the Word page, there's a link right up at the top of our site. Spread the Word. So go print some flyers, post them around town. There's also digital graphics you can download from there and put up on your website or your social media pages. Email 10 friends. Hey, you've got an email list of friends. Why not email them and tell them about savethefrogs.com or give them an actual action or request of something you want them to do. Organize a Save the Frogs Day event. And this is... Uh, very important because we think Save the Frogs Day is our most effective campaign. It educates many, many thousands, tens of thousands of people around the world each year. And uh, our Save the it is something that you can do because our Save the Frogs Day page has so many ideas for you on ways that you can hold an event in your community or otherwise get involved with Save the Frogs. Another easy way to help, fix your automated signature, savethefrogs.com. Put it in your email at the bottom of every email that you send. If it said savethefrogs.com, it would drive a lot of traffic to our site. Collect signatures. We have a few petitions on the site, and uh, we'll be updating our petition soon. But, you know, if you want to print a petition then that would be great. You can just post it up on a board somewhere, maybe at your school, and then pick it up a couple weeks later, or just walk around and ask people to sign it. Fill up one page and see what it's like talking to people about Save the Frogs. Fundraise. 
you are going to do a better job volunteering if you are a donor to Save the Frogs or if you have fundraised because you will then have that much more of a connection with Save the Frogs and be able to speak of it that much more passionately with uh, whoever you're talking to about frogs while you're volunteering. So first off, it's always great if any of you can donate to Save the Frogs. It's tax deductible and we really, really appreciate it. We do not get, we don't get any funding from the federal government, state government, local governments. We raise it all from, uh, mostly from individuals like you. So um, donate if you can. And also to fundraise, it's easy thing to just take an envelope, ask your friends for a dollar for Save the Frogs. Ask them for five if you want. Five probably works, but one dollar, most people will probably spare. You ask 20 friends that, next thing you know, you have $20, which is a pretty good donation. And we have a fundraising tips page you can go to, savethefrogs.com slash fundraise. That's got lots of other ideas on how you can fundraise. We will also very soon have a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising platform where you can easily make a, your own web page that will direct um, directly donate to Save the Frogs, but it will show your total raised and let you put in your own appeal to your friends and family so that you can direct your friends and family to your personalized Save the Frogs fundraising page and they can donate and it'll track your total. So once we have that, we definitely hope you'll take part in that. Talk to your local teachers everywhere. There are schools, so there are definitely local teachers around you. Talk to them about Save the Frogs Day, the Frog Poetry Contest, Frog Art Contest, Frog Dissections, and any other way you can think that their school may, may be able to get involved saving frogs and educating students, which is one of our top goals at Save the Frogs, to educate kids in the next generation so that people grow up caring about the planet. It's an easy school project to write an article about frog extinctions, mentioning savethefrogs.com for your school newspaper, <clears throat> or talk about Save the Frogs on your school radio. Now, I was reading this earlier, I wrote this a long time ago and I was thinking it's probably just as easy for anyone who's not a student to write an article about frog extinctions mentioning savethefrogs.com for their local newspaper, certainly around Save the Frogs Day. So if you like to write, then uh, start writing. Frog legs in your community, if you're opposed to the eating of frog legs, which has many problems associated with it then look up local restaurants. You can do some Yelp searches, Google searches for frog legs in your area. Compile a list of restaurants and their contact info that sell them, maybe supermarkets. Contact the manager, see what they say, ask them if they can stop. Let us know your results and the contact info of the restaurants as we do keep a spreadsheet listing places that sell frog legs so that one day when we once again have a volunteer dedicated to frog legs, they can contact those restaurants. One of our volunteers, Matt Serrano, several years ago, probably the only volunteer that we had specifically contacting restaurants and supermarkets, uh, he sent a letter to Wegmans and they stopped selling frog legs at all 76 of their supermarkets. So we know that we can accomplish a lot just sending letters and talking to people. We just need the volunteers who can actually go about doing that. Back to dissections, compile a list of school in your area that dissect frogs. Send us the list and you talk to the teachers too and tell them about savethefrogs.com slash dissections webpage and see if they'll stop. Now another thing, I've only gotten started right here with all the ways you can help because one of the first pages that I ever made for this website was our How to Help page. How to Help Save Frogs. There are at least 51 ways to save frogs listed on there. So I won't go into those yet, but I may uh, run you down that list shortly.
So definitely check out the How to Help page because it has specifically a lot of ways to improve your ecological footprint. That means your personal effect on the planet from all that you consume, essentially. So how to live more ecologically friendly. It also has plenty of other ways to help. Okay, let's see. Before I tell you what we expect of volunteers and how to apply to be a volunteer, let's check, let's uh, talk about some of the ways that you can volunteer other than following all these many things that I just talked about and then going to the how to help page, which lists many, many ways to save the frogs, not using pesticides, don't eat frog legs, don't purchase wild caught amphibians, etc. I'll let you check out that page. Okay, so ways anybody can help. On the volunteer page, savethefrogs.com slash volunteers, there's this link up here that says ways anybody can help. Oh, sorry, we already checked that out. I meant to take you to the job descriptions, and I put some job descriptions because there's many, many more jobs. These are just some that we've written out, and hopefully in this partial list, you will get some ideas for other activities. So the things we have job descriptions for, art contest promoter, campus assistant, corporate sponsor seeker, a data entry assistant, office assistant, website developer, iPhone app developer, graphic designer, film editor, film maker, event coordinator. Uh, let's see, posting flyers around town, a publicist to help us communicate our mission, helping out with the frog legs trade, pet trade issues such as wild caught frogs being used as pets, dissections, helping out with tables, informational tables, sales and merchandise assistant. We have a Save the Frogs gift center with awesome items you can buy to help support our cause and spread the word, savethefrogs.com slash gifts. So we could use someone helping promote that or creating new merchandise, getting our merchandise sold. Database developer, wildlife educator, Art contest, we have a Save the Frogs art contest that educates thousands of kids about frogs and gets us some pretty cool art that we can frame and sell and put pictures of on our site to make our site look good. So we could use somebody helping um, promote the art contest, process entries, um, judge entries, talk to the or communicate with the people who submitted their art or who are asking questions about it. Same thing with our poetry contest, people to help out coordinate and promote the contests. Campus assistant. So you're on a university campus or you go to high school. Well, posting flyers around your campus, starting a Save the Frogs club at your campus or chapter, holding film screenings of amphibian films, giving presentations at your campus. Uh, setting up a presentation for me. Maybe your university has funding. Some actually have lots of funding. So maybe your university can um, help fund a trip for me to come talk to your fellow students. And some other issues. So if you want to help out on a campus, then that's a great way to get involved. Corporate sponsorships. We've got a huge list of companies that have an interest in the environment and uh, we just need people helping out contact those companies, telling them about Save the Frogs and seeing if they can uh, sponsor Save the Frogs Day or donate to Save the Frogs. Data entry, maybe you just like to sit at a computer and type. Some people do. Put on your headphones. And we have lots of things that could use some data entry. If you want to do that online, we can send it to you. Or if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area and want to come to our office, then uh, we have plenty of stuff to be done in the office as well. On that topic, if you want to work in the office and help out, that would be great. To me, it is the single best way to learn the ins and outs of Save the Frogs. Come in the office and um, help out on a wide variety of things and talk frogs in a place with frogs on the walls, frog art, frog posters. 
website developer, if you're an experienced website developer, especially if you have skills in Joomla or in HTML coding, then let me know. If you're an iPhone app developer, then please contact me. Graphic designer, if you have skills in graphic design and do good work, then uh, especially if you know Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, then uh, you can help out. You don't have to be, you could be located anywhere in the world. Usually when we're doing graphic design with our graphic design volunteers, then uh, we're just connecting on Skype and doing a screen share so that we can both see the image that's being uh, created or edited. Speaking of editing, film editors, filmmakers, I know we have one expert filmmaker and editor on the line right now. So yeah, if you want to help out editing videos, we have videos that we've already made and they could just use a little bit of editing to make them look nice for YouTube. If you're good on YouTube and use YouTube a lot and want to handle our YouTube account or help out with it, uh, it could use various tweaks. We're a nonprofit and we can customize that page and do various things to make it look nicer. YouTube.com slash Save the Frogs is actually the very place where you can find a video of this Save the Frogs Academy volunteering class afterwards. We upload all these videos to YouTube.com slash Save the Frogs. And you can also try Save the Frogs.com slash YouTube and get there as well. Filmmaker, if you want to make a film and you have experience in that and can handle most of the project independently. There's tons of films to be made. Here's a few ideas. A film about the in invasive American bullfrogs in California. A film about atrazine. Ending the frog legs trade. Film about dissections. Film about climate change. So those are just films about threats to frogs. There's plenty of other things we can do. Footage of kids learning about frogs. Interview people on the street asking them what they know about frogs. You could film a Save the Frogs presentation, um, short films to promote our Save the Frogs poetry contest. We actually have Jeremy Pelsinski on the line, the filmmaker I referenced earlier, and he did make a frog art contest video, one of our, or perhaps our highest watched video. It's got about 9,000 views on YouTube. Savethefrogs.com slash art. You can see it there at the top of the page too. Go check it out. Event coordinator. If you're good at coordinating events, getting people to events, this one listed here is a bit outdated, but we could use your assistance and insight. Network administrator. Uh, we'll skip that one. Let's see. Publicist. If you have experience as a publicist and know how to communicate our mission effectively and get the word out, find us interviews and things like that, then uh, that's a great way to help. Please contact me if you have that expertise. Research assistants. I don't know if I'd necessarily call it research assistant. Yeah, there's research to be done, which restaurants are serving frog legs, which supermarkets are serving frog legs. But I like to take it a little bit further and um, have you actually get something done with that knowledge. We're not just collecting we're not just collecting the knowledge, we're applying the knowledge. And that means contacting restaurants and supermarkets and asking them to stop serving frog legs, contacting potential partner organizations to help get the word out about the damage done by the ecologically destructive trade in frogs for use as food. <clears throat> Excuse me. Research assistant, ending the pet trade. Same basic thing, ending the pet trade. That's not necessarily correct because we're not trying to end the pet trade. We're trying to end the trade in wild caught amphibians for use as pets. So getting the word out about that and working with some organizations that can help us end the trade in wild caught frogs for use as pets. If you want to learn about the pet trade and um, then you should check out again on our youtube.com slash save the frogs. You can find our video about the pet trade and making it a more frog friendly place. Research assistant, 
dissections campaign. Again, helping out with dissections. I talked about that before. Table assistant. If you want to help run informational tables out in the public, I told you about that video at the top of savethefrogs.com slash volunteers about tabling and effective advocacy. Go check that out. Sales and merchandise assistant, creating new merchandise, getting our Save the Frogs merchandise sold by large distributors, getting it into stores. Database developer, if you have experience with Salesforce or MySQL, then please let us know. Wildlife educator, so if you have experience with wildlife, learning about wildlife, teaching people about wildlife, then there's lots of ways that we can use your knowledge to uh, help people, help other people learn about wildlife. That could be creating fact sheets, um, giving slide, making slideshows, giving presentations, lots of ways to help in that realm. So I'm going to go back to the volunteer page. And I actually have more ways to help. Give me one second and I will show you what I have. Okay. I have these listed out here on this slideshow in the order. You'll see them listed on the volunteer application form if you choose to apply to be an official Save the Frogs volunteer, which again, there's plenty of things you can do to volunteer without needing to apply to do anything more because as I said, I listed 20 different activities anybody can do. But here they are, educational materials, create educational materials that are specifically relevant towards Save the Frogs, um, towards your, sorry, I have technology uh, blocking my screen, so I'm guessing what some of that says. Create educational materials specifically relevant towards the organization's geographical location mission. That was actually written um, for people starting Save the Frogs chapters in various places. Sorry for the noise. Excuse me. So one day I'll learn how to mute that phone. Create educational materials. We're just going to leave it there. You've seen the slide. There's all kinds of educational materials that can be created. Moving on. Educational presentations, giving live presentations at schools, national parks, zoos, universities, community groups, political gatherings, etc. to help get the word out. Running tables, festivals, on campus, concerts, farmers markets. There's lots of places to run an informational table. Educate people, promote Save the Frogs, sell merchandise, collect donations, collect petition signatures collect email addresses. So there's lots of value in holding a table and you get to talk to the public. We need people to take charge of our campaigns as in we need a person who would be fully in charge of our dissections campaign or fully in charge of our frog legs campaign. We can provide the supervision, but we need essentially a point person for that. We also need people helping out with them in other respects, but if any of you want to um, step up and actually take charge because you're so passionate about one of these various campaigns, then that would be great. And then you could actually start to coordinate other volunteers who would be assisting you. So uh, that's uh, a great thing to do if you really want to be proactive is take full charge of one of these Save the Frogs campaigns and as I said, we can supervise you, but that would basically be your deal. You'd be working on frog legs, if that's what interests you. Raise awareness of the issue in the general public. Meet with politicians, corporations, other relevant groups that can assist. You don't have to, but you can. Create paper petitions for use at live events. Create electronic petitions and get, help get us signatures for them and write letters to the perpetrators of the environmental damage. 
Sometimes that's all it takes. As I said before, one of our volunteers wrote Wegman Supermarkets. They stopped serving frog legs at all 76 of their supermarkets. So sometimes it just comes down to contacting the people and talking to them, seeing if they'll change. Save the Frogs Day. Not only do we want you having a Save the Frogs Day event in your community, but I personally need some assistance running our worldwide Save the Frogs Day events from a coordination standpoint. So I've been coordinating Save the Frogs Day all five years that we've had it. We've got the sixth annual Save the Frogs Day coming up. Our goal is to get 300 educational events in about 50 countries. So it's a lot of coordinating people who are holding the events, who are writing in with their questions and sending us their project description or their event descriptions, photos from their events, things like that. So I could really use some assistance with that if you really like Save the Frogs Day and want to get involved in that respect. Contests I talked about. We have an art contest, poetry contest. We'll soon have a couple other contests. And we get a lot of entries. We get a lot of people asking us questions about the contest. So again, someone to fully take charge of one of those contests we can supervise you. We've been doing it for five years, so we know how to do it. We just would like somebody assisting, prefer and preferably actually fully in charge. Marketing, promotion, and communications. Perhaps you have a degree in any of that. And we need people to communicate our upcoming events, volunteer needs, uh, ways to get involved and inform people of our organization's recent accomplishments. Basically, getting the word out about Save the Frogs, making sure that the public and relevant groups know about us and our campaigns, increasing our visibility. You can help by writing press releases. Again, if you like to write, press releases are pre-written articles that we send out to newspapers and journalists, and they can use that article to write their article. Or sometimes they just use our article and put it up on their site or wherever it's going. Assisting with creating electronic and hard copy newsletters. So, yeah, this comes down to are you good at communicating and do you have some experience getting the word out? If not, then maybe you're just really good at communicating and we can guide you down the path of getting the Save the Frogs word out. Social media, if you want to help out managing promoting, um, getting the word out through our Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube accounts, or whatever, whatever outlet you deem effective. Maybe there's one I didn't list here and you think it would be great and you'd want to take charge of it, posting up Save the Frogs photos, posting up any of our recent Save the Frogs news from our newsletters, or just maybe copying some of our Facebook or Twitter updates and posting it on the social media network of your choice. And this helps educate people about frog conservation, increase the awareness to save the frogs, it drives site traffic, it communicates our upcoming events and everything we do. So it's a free form of publicity that we should take advantage of. And especially if we have volunteers running them, then it costs us essentially no money which is good because then we don't have to spend money on advertisements and traditional methods such as magazines. We can get the word out in other ways. Graphic design, I talked about if you have graphic design experience, we've got a, tons of ways that you can help. Fundraising, if you want to help out specifically as a volunteer fundraiser, help us write grants, help us get more members, Help us sell more merchandise, find more donors, find corporate sponsorships, um, help with fundraising at events. If you know how to raise money, development, as it's called in the nonprofit world, or want to learn, then we could use your help and you would definitely get some very beneficial experience, certainly if you ever want to run your own nonprofit as you will have to raise money. And I've listed so many volunteer positions. If we have a lot of volunteers, then we could certainly use a volunteer coordinator. So 
we need a volunteer coordinator to find us volunteers, to manage current volunteers, to keep the volunteers working as effectively as possible. So if you like to manage people, coordinate people, this is a great way to help out. Save the Frogs Academy, you're on it. Thank you for being here. If you want to help out Save the Frogs Academy by helping us promote Save the Frogs Academy to get more people here, new students. If you want to help us find guest presenters who can talk all about the frog conservation or environmental conservation work that they do, then we could certainly use some assistance. Currently, I'm giving most of the classes and doing most of what I just listed. And I'm also doing all the other stuff that you see me doing. So I could certainly use some help. If you like Save the Frogs Academy, then volunteer for Save the Frogs Academy. Another thing is helping us get some grants to run Save the Frogs Academy and to um, help it grow and continue. So there's lots of things to do exclusively just to help Save the Frogs Academy get bigger so that we can educate, directly educate more people. Merchandise I talked about. If you want to help us create merchandise, if you want to help us get merchandise into stores and you think you have some experience, certainly if you're wanting to help us create merchandise, hopefully you have some really good ideas. And... You're welcome to send us any of your ideas. Student coordination. Someone who can specifically target all the students on our mailing list, which is thousands of them, and getting those students involved, more involved and getting them active. Field work. If you have a lot of experience in the field with amphibians and you want to help build frog ponds, restore habitat, take people out on frogging expeditions to get the public out there. Uh, if you have a university group, maybe a long-term ecological research site is a good way to educate students at your university about frogs and get some time outside. Website design. If you have experience, as I said, we can use your help. So let me switch back. Okay, so I just listed so many ways that you can get involved in Save the Frogs. Now, let's move on down to what we expect of volunteers. Now, by, when I say this, I mean, and I ought to update the site to reflect this, you're a volunteer. If you're doing all that stuff or any of that stuff that I just mentioned, if you're doing it on your own, all those ways that you can help on your own, you're a volunteer. If you want to be an official volunteer in a more um, structured role with us, then here are the things that we will expect of you. We'll expect you to be proactive, motivated, and dedicated, of course. Your time commitment. If you apply to be a volunteer and get accepted, then we expect you to, and therefore you should not apply unless you think you can do this, we expect you to Volunteer a minimum of four hours per week. That's half a day per week for one year. And maybe you say that's not a lot. Or maybe you say, wow, that's a lot. I'm not sure where you stand. But the reason we have that is because it takes us time to train you. So we don't want to train you and then you're gone in a month or you're only working 20 minutes a week. We want to make sure that we train you and get the most out of having put in that time to give you our knowledge um, so that you can get the most, so that you can produce the most with the time that we've dedicated towards training you. Also, amphibians are going extinct rapidly. We need your help. We need all the help that we can get. So we want you to be volunteering as much as you can find the time to do. And volunteering is fun and educational and a great experience that we know you will enjoy. We know you will enjoy it because everybody at Save the Frogs 
has volunteered for Save the Frogs at some point before we became official Save the Frogs staff. So everyone has done it. We continued doing it because we enjoyed it. We've learned a lot about it that we can, um, you know, apply that knowledge to frog conservation or to whatever, whatever other type of inter- environmental conservation we want to do. So if you accept to save the frog volunteer position, please respond to emails in a timely manner. Complete the tasks you accept in a timely manner or inform us if you're unable to do so. And please track your hours and report your hours to us monthly. We'll come up with a official reporting system of some sort. For now, just track your hours. If you worked three hours today or volunteered three hours and write it down, just start a spreadsheet and put the date and put the hours that you worked and put, you know, a few words about what you did. Okay, so we have arrived the moment you've all been waiting for. Volunteer application form. Here's the application form. Download it. It's a Microsoft Word file. It's five pages long. It will probably take you about two hours to complete. And it has all the information you need to fill out the application. It asks you a few questions. It Well, the first couple pages are just reminding you about some of the things I just stated, about your time commitment, and if you're ready to volunteer. And then it asks you a few questions about uh, what, why you like Save the Frogs, essentially, and what you want to do at Save the Frogs. And I say in there very clearly, you should only be applying if you know what it is or have some ideas about in what respect you would like to volunteer. It's not good to fill out the application and say, I wanna help in any way I can, because I love frogs so much. That doesn't help us, because we don't know what you wanna do, and it's clear if we see that, that you have not put much time into thinking about what it is you want to do. So it lists some various ideas. I just told you many, many ways you can help. So just think about what's the most important to you, how can you be the most effective, volunteering for Save the Frogs, what's of interest to you. Whatever you are most interested in, you will be the most passionate about and you will get the most done and it will be the most enjoyable. All right, so that's, I think, most of what I have to say. Let me, I'm going to open it up to questions. So if you have questions, you can chat them in to me or you can raise your hand and I will unmute you if you want to ask your question or if we have any Save the Frogs volunteers on the line, and I know that we do, people who have held Save the Frogs Day events and done other activities for the frogs, we have a few on the line right now. And if any of you want to tell us anything about your experiences volunteering for Save the Frogs, just passing on your experience to all the potential volunteers out there, then please raise your hand and tell us about what you've done. Okay, we have no hands up, even though we have volunteers out there, so that's fine. They can Tell us about their volunteer experiences another time if they want. And we don't have any questions, so I think I must have explained everything extremely thoroughly. So go check out savethefrogs.com slash volunteers. Again, just go to the home page and scroll down left sidebar until you see volunteer or click savethefrogs.com slash volunteers and (laughs) we do have one very special volunteer save the frogs board member cn hayes who also has managed our save the frogs poetry contest for quite some time and maybe even done a few other save the frogs activities such as getting us set up with some local businesses who are supporting the frogs and CN is unmuted. Hi, CN. Hello. 
Hi, where are you calling in from, Cien? Guatemala. Okay, excellent. So we have Cien. We have Cien Hayes, Save the Frogs board member, volunteer, poetry contest coordinator, corporate sponsorship set up yeah. person. She's done so much. Tell us anything you want about your volunteer experience, Cien. I'd say the Save the Frogs has been great, and it's cool to be part of a you know, pretty grassroots organization that has been for every, any kind of volunteer activity that you think is great and you can set up. I think that Carrie is willing to listen to it. And yeah, it's been a very cool experience. I've got to meet a lot of people that are passionate about frogs and had opportunities for networking um, for other things that I wanted to do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Sian. Oh. Let's see. We can we can hear you. You fade out a little bit, but we can essentially hear what you're saying. Okay. Do you have anything else to add? Nope, that's okay. And thank you to anyone that will volunteer. Okay. Thanks. That was Cien calling in from Guatemala. And let's see. We have Choti Singh, Save the Frogs. Volunteer, Volunteer. Save the Frogs, Belize Eco Tour participant. She helped set up Save the Frogs Day events and a recent presentation that I gave at Colorado State University. How's it going, Choti? Hi, it's going good. Um, I'm in Colorado and I just wanted to speak a minute about volunteering for people that haven't so far. Um, it became clear to me very early in volunteering for Save the Frogs that most of the people out there in the public, um, they don't know that there's an amphibian, that there's a crisis, that there's species becoming extinct. They don't know that there is a problem. Um, I think the vast majority, obviously all of us online right now like frogs, love frogs. It takes very little to just speak to people about the problems and the small ways day to day that they can make a difference. Um, I think that's a great place to start. It's not so intimidating because the fact that you like frogs and care about this issue will come across when you just give them basic information about what's happening. And that can be done in a variety of venues. Save the Frogs Day is a great place with um, tabling, having an informational table because you have a lot of, Save the Frogs has a lot of printed material and information on the website. So it's very easy to acquire basic information to give to the general people in the public as they walk past. I would recommend that's a good place to start. Okay, thanks a lot, Choti. Thanks. Does anyone else have questions or would they like to talk? Just raise your hand. Final call for your input. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna see what happens here. We have Sanjeev in Nepal, I believe. And I'm gonna unmute him and see if he is out there. Namaste, Sanjeev. Namaste, Kerry. Hi. Why don't you tell us Hi. um tell us a little bit about your just briefly who you are, where you're based, and what you have done for Save the Frogs. Okay, my name is Sondi Busti and I have been studying veterinary medicine in IES Rambuchito. And I have just recently conducted the Save the Frog Day event in IES Rambur. And I have also given the presentation in one of the school uh, over the rural place in the Nepal. Sanj Sanjeev, sorry. Yes. Can you talk can you talk a little bit slower? Okay, okay. Thanks. So you're calling in uh, from Nepal and you held a Save the Frogs Day event? Yeah, of course. I have conducted the art competition over the IES Rampur. And we have also conducted the presentation program in the, uh, in the school. Uh, and we have also conducted the petition program in petition. the IES Rampur. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what type of petitions were they? Uh, petition was against the no to atrazine. No, say no to atrazine because you guys yeah. have you guys use lots of pesticides in Nepal. Yeah, is that yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, the, 
Yep. Farmers use the lost lot of pesticides, and we have just called the professors of the agriculture department uh, to take part in our petition program. Okay, excellent. So, okay, so yeah, so Sanjeev went into schools in Nepal on Save the Frogs Day and got them drawing frog art and educated them about petition, or sorry, educated them about atrazine and got them to sign petitions. Anything else that you've done in Nepal? For save the frogs. Uh, now I am thinking of about uh, establishing one of the chapter or club in our university. Okay, in what town are you in? Uh, I am in uh, now Chiton. Chitwan. Yeah, Chiton. Okay, excellent. So, all right, thanks a lot, Sanjeev. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay, so that was Sanjeev calling in near Chitwan National Park, which. Definitely has some frogs and hopefully still has some tigers and elephants running around. Okay, anybody else have a question or want to talk? You can chat in a question or raise your hand. And if not, then I will just very briefly tell you what's coming up. Just click this event link to find out upcoming events for Save the Frogs, including Save the Frogs Academy classes which you can also check out at savethefrogs.com slash academy so this sunday save the frogs ghana that's what we're going to be talking about we will have gilbert adam from save the frogs ghana on the line i think we're going to have sandra from save the frogs ghana on the line who you have probably never heard from but she'll tell you about some of her work that she's doing over in ghana and myself and Michael Starkey will be talking about our experiences in Ghana. And we'll all be giving you lots of ways to help out. Something that I didn't even tell you about during this call, other ways to volunteer, our international branches, Mexico, Colombia, Bangladesh, Ghana, they could use your assistance, even if you're not living in those countries. And then September 25th, We'll be talking about Sharp Park wetlands and the California red-legged frogs that are living there and being illegally killed by the city of San Francisco when they drain the wetlands. And we'll also be talking about American bullfrogs. They're invasive. We don't want them here. We'll be talking about how we can get California to ban the bullfrogs. So we'll call that an end to today's Save the Frogs Academy class. If you like Save the Frogs and Save the Frogs Academy, please donate. Right now we have a brand new fundraising campaign going on to raise $10,000 for Save the Frogs. And we just put this online and we have a new fundraising website. Hopefully it'll load. There it is. It's run through Indiegogo.com and Click any of those donate links from the homepage. It'll take you there and help raise $10,000. I'm about to celebrate my 10th year in amphibian conservation. So if you want to help me keep doing what I do and keep Save the Frogs going and growing with the numerous programs that we do that reach tens of thousands of people, then help me raise $10,000. And uh, if you donate, it would be great because it's just getting going and it takes a little momentum. Once a few people have donated, then people who end up on this page are much more likely to donate. And I'd like to send out a letter about this to everybody on our mailing list and have that number be higher than the 100 that it is right now. We can't save the world's frogs on $100, unfortunately. So please chip in, especially if you like Save the Frogs Academy and um, appreciate what we do. All right, I am Save the Frogs founder, Dr. Carrie Krieger. You've been listening to Save the Frogs Academy class, all about volunteering and ways that anybody can help Save the Frogs. Go check out savethefrogs.com slash volunteers and savethefrogs.com slash academy to learn more. Thank you very much. Have a great day.